Hi, everyone. Um, we are talking now in our uh, series on what makes SOF work uh, with Don Rubin, who is uh, the board vice chairman at the moment and um, has been a member for a number of years. Uh, Don joins us from Toronto, Canada. Do I have that correct? That's well, just north of Toronto. I, I, I live about an hour north of Toronto in a 170 year old log house, a two story log house. Wow. That's a heritage house. Wow. And uh, it's uh, it, it's an honor to live in a house this old. And I'm getting there myself. <laughs> Aren't we all? Um, give me a sense of uh, your background, both in uh, theater and in uh, academia, where I know you uh, uh, hold a position. Um, I am officially called a professor emeritus uh, in theater from York University in Toronto. Basically, professor emeritus uh, means that you're retired and you're retired with an honorable discharge. Um, I actually once looked up emeritus and I see that the uh, E means without a loss of. So it <laughs> seems to me that a professor emeritus is somebody without honor, without merit, but they uh, give that title to distinguished professors. So who, who can complain about it? Um, I taught the uh, authorship. Uh, I taught uh, courses in the authorship for four years at my university before retiring about two years ago. Um, I taught at York University um, in the theater department for 48 years. Wow. Um, I, I started uh, the day after my bar mitzvah and, and just continued to teach. Um, I, I, I love teaching um, and, and always have. Before teaching, I worked for many years as a theater critic uh, for the New Haven Register in New Haven, Connecticut. Um, where I spent a lot of time in and around Yale and uh, the Yale Drama School. And uh, then I was offered a position by the Toronto Star, uh, which brought me uh, to Toronto. That's the paper Ernest Hemingway worked for. So by association, I feel uh, very honored to uh, have not been- a, Not a bad lineage. Star. So um, so basically uh, my background, I started as an actor. I wound up after my degrees uh, working as a, a theater historian and a professional theater critic. and. Then then eventually devolved my way into teaching uh, full time. And um, uh, in all those years that uh, I worked as a theater critic and, and studied theater at, at the undergraduate and graduate levels, uh, worked with people like Bernard Beckerman, a, a wonderful Shakespeare scholar. Um, he was at uh, Columbia and Hofstra, my uh, alma mater. Um, Hofstra also was the place where uh, Shakespeare scholar John Cranford Adams reconstructed a version of the globe. He thought the globe looked like that. And that was the stage I acted on as a young uh, theater student. So I had all sorts of Shakespeare background, but no one had ever in all those thousands of years mentioned to me anything about the authorship. Um, it came to me as, as really a total shock. Uh, despite the fact that I had uh, taught a number of courses in uh, theater history. Um, uh, I just took the uh, traditional story and, and didn't go much further with it. And then I read Mark Anderson's book, Shakespeare by Another Name. Uh, this was about uh, 15 years ago, and I was stunned by that book. And I contacted Mark after I read the book, and I said, I think this is a mini series. I think you have to spread the word uh, about this book. Um, Mark and I became friends and uh, I, he recommended other books for me to read. Uh, then uh, I said, I'm going to um, uh, read as much as I can on the subject. And I've been reading ever since. Um, I joined the 
Shakespeare Oxford Fellowship. I went, my first conference was in Houston. I believe that was in 2009. Mm -hmm. um, I went uh, to basically have a good laugh about the authorship. I mean, these people must be crazy. Um, I've been to academic conferences all over the world my whole life. I've given uh, dozens and dozens of papers and this was going to be fun. I was really going to just have a laugh. And uh, my wife, Pat, and I went off to Houston. We thought it was a four-day conference. We thought, well, we'll spend two days at the conference and two days at NASA. We can go down and see um, uh, the Space Center and see what that's really about. And uh, I, I was stunned my first day at the conference because the conference papers were more serious than almost every academic paper I had heard uh, over my dozens of years as an <laughs> academic working in other areas. That's they, very interesting. They, 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 these people were serious. These people weren't uh, joking around. They had points to make. And I was really fascinated by that. And Pat and I did go off to NASA, I have to tell you that, uh, one day, and, and uh, we got to watch the uh, um, uh, satellite with, with the uh, people on board and, and, and what they were doing. And we were fascinated, and we started uh, to talk about NASA and Houston and the space issue and Shakespeare, uh, and everything got all uh, mucked up together. And Pat, who is a poet, uh, wrote a poem uh, out of that experience. Uh, and the first line is, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, it's a wonderful poem, which ends with uh, De Vere um, uh, fording uh, the river, the Oxford. Um, uh. it's, it's been published in a number of places. But I became fascinated by the organization, by the issue, by the seriousness of the people. Um, I joined the board in, I guess it was 2011. And in 2013, um, I organized the conference, the annual conference in Toronto. Oh, and wow. that was when the SOF and the Shakespeare Fellowship uh, merged. And, and I did everything I could to push that together. I couldn't understand why there were two organizations yeah, doing yeah. Essentially the same thing. And um, uh, I've stayed on the board. I was on the board for, I think, the maximum term, which is nine years years, was off the board for a year, then rejoined again uh, a year or two ago. Um, right now, as you said, I'm the vice president uh, of the board. I'm also the uh, chair of the conference committee. So I'm involved with organizing the annual conference each fall. Um, this coming year, as you know, it's in Ashland, Oregon. Uh, we're probably going to do a combination of uh, in person and live uh, video there. Um, the last conference was a great one. That was in Hartford, Connecticut at the Mark Twain House. That was in 2019, and we attracted the largest number of people we'd ever had at one of our conferences. And I can tell people that we're already planning the 2023 conference, which will take place in New Orleans. Oh, um, and, and we're very excited uh, about that. Tell the me. Committee also does the spring symposium, which we've been having since we haven't had live conferences. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm fairly busy with the board meetings, which take place monthly, and the conference committee, which deals with all these other things. Tell me about organizing a conference. Um, it's one thing if it's in Toronto, your hometown, um, but this one's going to be in Ashland. What do you have to do long distance to make it work on behalf of the members who either will attend in person or my understanding is you're trying to work something out so they can be at home or at least not in Ashland um, and attend virtually. Tell me a little bit about that. 
Yeah, it, it's it's an interesting challenge uh, because um, uh, the last two years we haven't had any conference because people wouldn't travel because of COVID, understood. But now people are not sure. Are they going to go? Are they not going to go? Yeah. And I've had contact with people who said, if there are any COVID restrictions like vaccinations, I'm not coming. And other people have contacted me and said, unless there are COVID restrictions and people are vaccinated, I'm not coming. Um, Basically, um, what has to happen is uh, we choose a city and there's a conference committee of six, seven, eight people. Uh, we choose a city and generally we try to choose a city uh, that will A, be of interest to authorship people uh, in the SOF. Um, ideally, there will be somebody in that city who can check out hotels for us, who can uh, speak to caterers. Um, uh, we had a conference in Chicago some years ago, and I went to Chicago on my own just to check out the hotels because we didn't have anybody there at that time. Um, but usually we try to get somebody there. Um, uh, once we've uh, chosen a hotel and a caterer, we need somebody to video the conference, and we've traditionally put it up on YouTube. We announce uh, the conference dates and put out a call for papers. Anybody in the organization who wants to propose a paper or a panel or an event sends in by the date. We usually choose about 50%, 60% of our speakers on the first call. We put out a second call and fill out the remainder of the conference from that, if necessary, a third call, but rarely do we need to go past a second call. Um, we usually have 20 speakers, uh, panels, uh, events like that. And uh, in this case in Ashland, um, we've really been looking at how to make the conference available immediately, not just putting it up on YouTube a week or two later, but how people from around the world can participate in the conference, at least observe it, hear all the papers, send in comments, things like that. Um, we could have done it by Zoom, um, but we were told that wasn't the ideal way to do it. Because we were videoing the conference anyway, we've been speaking with a videographer in Ashland who says, he can add to the whole thing and set it up with um, a password that can be offered to uh, people who sign up for the conference. And uh, that's probably the way we're going to do it. People will be able to um, register and then tune into the conference, probably uh, be able to send in questions uh, to it. We're working on details now. Um, we are assuming that we will have um, probably two thirds of the kind of numbers we usually have live at the uh, conference. And maybe we'll double that number with people who are tuning in from all over the world um, mm -hmm. for our uh, spring symposium, we had 320 people joining us online or registering online, of which 240 people actually attended. This was, uh, this was fascinating a, to, to see that. Yeah. This was an all day event only available online. Is that accurate? Right. Right. And the Ashland is now going to be, it looks like two thirds live, one third um, uh, of our audience, we're assuming will come uh, via uh, a live stream. And that number could be very large. If we have 60 or 70 people in Ashland, we could have 200 people or more from around the world. To really show that, I mean, there's a real interest in Oxford and alternative uh, authorship issues. Ours is obviously Oxford. Um, but uh, uh, I, I think that kind of attendance uh, remotely or in person uh, speaks to the interest uh, in figuring out um, who the author was and what the impact of uh, an accurate um, biographical understanding of the author was. Um, with, within the, uh, 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 the organization itself, um, do you have other roles? Um, I know you're on the board, but why don't you talk about if you've got them? Uh, give us a sense of some other roles that you play. Beyond the conference committee, uh, you know, and, and hopefully others know that uh, the SOF gives out grants 
for research, oh. for travel. People can move around the world, can do research around the world. And there is a grants committee headed by John Hamill. I'm on that grants committee. We accept uh, grant applications once a year. There's information on the website about it. Uh, we've given out grants anywhere from $1,000 to uh, ten dollars or $12,000 for people to do research uh, on Oxford, on the authorship uh, generally. So um, the grants committee accepts the grants, um, evaluates the grants, and then makes uh, a series of, of decisions on that and gives out money. So anybody who's a researcher, that's another aspect. Um, I'm also on the editorial advisory board of of the Oxfordian, which is the SOF's annual journal. Um, Peer reviewed, I believe. Peer reviewed, and, and I work with Gary Goldstein, who is the editor. There's about a dozen on the editorial board. And when Gary receives uh, an essay, uh, from somebody uh, who, who thinks that this is important research, wants it in the Oxfordian. Gary sends it out to members of the editorial advisory board for a peer review. And if he doesn't find the peers who are able to look at that uh, on the board, he sends it out more widely to the SOF membership. And then he's gone out on occasion to the whole world if, if there's something really uh, unusual. So um, I, I, I quite enjoy the work that I'm doing uh, with the uh, Oxfordian. I'm currently reviewing for the Oxfordian Stephanie Hopkins Hughes' uh, new book, Educating Shakespeare, a fascinating uh, book. I, I recommend it uh, to people. Um, I am. I have it here, uh, somewhere. It's here somewhere. I have it here somewhere. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a it's an absolutely fascinating book. Um, also, I'm working uh, right now with Jim Warren. Jim Warren is um, publishing. Uh, he's a one man publishing tornado. Um, he's publishing, uh, republishing a series of volumes by an important mid century, mid twentieth century theater critic um, named Percy Allen. And Jim has asked me to write the introduction uh, to the volume on Percy Allen as a theater critic myself huh. to talk about how Percy Allen uh, would work and what he would see and that kind of things. So I'm uh, reading Jim's advance uh, material on Percy Allen and uh, I'm preparing that. And um, uh, this is uh, going to be a, another fascinating series of books uh, that uh, Jim Warren has published. I'm, I'm just keeping busy just for fun in my spare time. Um, I've written a play about Oxford. Oh, wow. Italian boy. Um, and uh, the first act, I think, is very good and works. The second act, I'm not happy with yet, so I keep rewriting and rewriting and rewriting. So, so this is news to me. Um, this play, is it, um, uh, is it something that can be staged? Can, it, can we do a reading? Can we have you know, through the website and, and stuff like that? Well, I'm hoping that, um, uh, I was hoping that uh, it might be able, we might be able to have a reading of it uh, at the Ashland conference. But as I said, I'm not happy with the second act oh. yet. I'm my own worst critic. And and so um, I, I was thinking, well, maybe I would put out the first act uh, and maybe we could read that because I know that's working. Um, but I decided I'm going to wait until it's totally finished. So maybe it'll be another year. Right. Um, but uh, it, it's a play that, um, I think theaters anywhere in the world might be interested in. Oh, that'd be great. Play that that'd would be... work. And um, I, I look forward to uh, spreading it around, sending it to, uh, uh, to regional theaters all over the world. Oh, wonderful. Um, I want to go back to the grants committee for a second. Um, uh, is it a passive committee in that you say we have X number of dollars, send us your proposals? Or do you say we are interested in pursuing research on X and we have Y number of dollars, send us your proposals? In other words, do you try and shape the, um, uh, the distribution chain of the money? Um, I think, honestly, I have to say it's more passive than, than active in that sense. Um, what uh, we basically 
basically say is we're interested in anything connected to Oxford, the mm -hmm. biography, um, uh, the work, the plays. Um, but we're also interested uh, slightly uh, less specifically in the authorship itself. Um, anybody who feels they can do research or are researching something even connected to the authorship or people who Oxford knew, Sturmius, a a anybody. Um, we're interested in that. Uh, there's a list of five or six general subjects on the website on uh, for the grants. Um, so it's not people who want a trip to England, but if if uh, we we find that um, uh, people uh, look at the website, say, "Oh yeah, I'm interested in pursuing this," um, we're open. We're uh, we're wide open to to ideas in, in a whole range of areas. We're not pushing any specific area okay. we're not contacting researchers ourselves and saying would you do this or that so if people have ideas just uh, send Thank them in it makes sense uh, we will try to support it so um in an, in another stage of my life when i was in the position of giving out uh fellowships um to attend programs usually in washington the worst part of the job was telling people they didn't get the fellowship, <laughs> that, that they weren't going to be going with us to wherever we were going, whether it was just come into Washington or go with us to Beijing in days when you could do that. I really hated that part of the job. I'm wondering whether, and sometimes the anecdotes around them were poignant. People really needed this, they wanted it, but you know, if you're grading on a, a, a set of hierarchies, uh, you need to make some decisions. Any anecdotes along that line where you've had to turn people down and it broke your heart or it turned out you were wrong? Um, or um, uh, the good news is, you know, good news is the cat gets out of the tree. Um, uh, but anything that isn't the cat getting out of the tree, anything come to mind on that? <laughs> um, I have to say that. Um, I, I have read a number of proposals that I personally have liked that others on the committee, there's usually yeah. anywhere from four to six people who rate these. And um, what we do in our ratings is, is, is interesting. Um, if we have, let's say, um, nine proposals, or as we have at the uh, conference, uh, we, we, we have, uh, let, let's say, uh, 30 proposals for papers at the conference, and we only have 15 spaces. Yeah. Um, or we have nine proposals for a grant, and we only have um, uh, four grants or five grants, something like that. If we have five or six people rating them on, on a scale, uh, let's say uh, 10, 9, 8 uh, kind of thing down, um, what I have always found is that there's probably a third of the proposals that stand out that everybody says, these are really, really good. Yeah. And so yeah. let's say out of nine, we'll say three stand out and everybody agrees. Then there's usually another three that almost everybody says, eh, it doesn't really work for us. Um, the proposals are not on our subject and not in our area. Uh, somebody wants to deal uh, with music in, in the Renaissance and um, because Oxford liked music, you know, and it just, it's tangential. So there's usually about three that people don't like. And then there's about three in the middle. Those are the ones we really discuss. That's and where you work. The ones we, we have to put our time in, whether it's for a grant or whether it's for the conference. Those are the uh, discussion points. Um, Usually, I can tell people why they're turned down um, in, in those that everybody agrees to turn down, because usually they're not on subject. Um, it's those middle ones that are difficult to write uh, emails and letters to people about, because they could be there, or with a slight turn, they could be there, and we really want them. And what I try to do in those cases is to say to people, um, uh, for the next conference or the, or the next symposium, you might want to try this way or that way. 
people oh generally are understanding. Every now and then you'll get a response from somebody who says, you people are idiots and I'll never speak to you again. Uh, it, it happens from time to time, but um, I, I do try to word everything said to people very carefully because the people on these committees are very sympathetic. They want to support people. And even if yeah. they have to say no. They they want people to come back uh, with a support uh, with support for for something they're doing. So uh, we're, we're trying to be nice. I don't have any uh, stories that I can share with you that probably are just as well. <laughs> just as well. Well, look, thank you very much for spending this uh, this time with us. That's really a great insight into how the organization works, kind of underneath. Um, and uh, uh, I found it very interesting. So thank, thank you, Bob. and we'll be in touch soon. Thank you, Bob. It's it's uh, fascinating to work uh, within the SOF. Yes. I, I love the people I work with. It takes a lot of time. People will be surprised at how much time these meetings uh, take, day, night, Zoom, in person, whatever. But I love the people. I love the subject. And uh um, I just keep going on with it because, because of that, uh, that commitment to what we're doing. Sounds Thank good. you. Bob. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.